Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? Who showed the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide to leave? Whose words alone can catch a falling star And I know my Redeemer lives I know my Redeemer The very same God that spins things in orbit. He runs to the weary, the worn and the weak. And the same gentle hands that hold me I'm broken They conquered death To bring me victory And I To take away my shame And He lives Forever I proclaim That the payment For my sin Was the precious blood He gave Oh, but now he's alive and there's an empty grave and I Song if we got any more left. Listen to the word of this song. Born again, I promise you like this song. I'd heard that his grace was amazing. 
I'd heard of his wonderful peace. I'd heard how his love lifted sinners out of their wretched misery. But I didn't know this Redeemer. I was so lost in hell bound till one day I met him at Calvary. And there neath the cross I found a half as it be
Praise the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>
I went to this doctor and there was no waiting. He took me right in that night. And I told him that I had no money, no insurance. But he said that's all right. This sickness I had was killing me daily. So I fell down on my face. He said, child, it's sin, but my touch can heal you in mercy. I'll take your care.
I'm glad he took my case, ain't you? I'm glad there ain't no case that's too big for God. There's a lot of people, they'll have sicknesses, they'll have cancer, they'll have this and the other, and they go to the doctor, they have no idea. They could get, they could get a partial cure, but they might suffer this the rest of their life or that, but I thank God I had something way worse than cancer, amen. I had a sin dead on my life, and I had no way out. But when Jesus come by, and he took my case, he healed me, and I ain't never been the same, Brother Mike Marsh. There ain't no side effects. I don't have to take no medication. All I got to do is just keep coming to his house and enjoying the good things of God. Amen. I'm glad that he took my case. And I'm glad there ain't no case. He ain't never lost. Amen. 100%. No, no lawyer in the world can say that. He's 100%. Who else has got a song? Glory, come sing to us. Counts the stars one and all. Knows how much sand is on the shore. Sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything. Of all creatures great and small. And he knows my name. Every step that I take. Every move that I make, every tear that I've cried, He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of day, but I know I'll be just fine, cause He knows my name. Don't know what tomorrow may bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. I may not have all the answers to the questions of life, but I know in whom I have believed. And he knows my name, every step that I take, every move. Every tear that I've cried, he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of day, but I know I'll be just fine, cause he knows my name. He knew who I was when he carried that cross, and he knew that I would fail him. But he took the loss And he knows my name Every step that I take Every move that I make Every tear that I cry He knows my name When I'm overwhelmed by the pain I can't see the light of day But I know I'll be he knows my name. Um, he preached the other week about joy. And uh, he was talking about, you know, you, sometimes you got joy when it don't even make sense. But there's just a, a peace down deep inside. And I've had this heart, uh, this song in my heart even before he preached that. But I don't want to try that, try this tonight. I may make a mess of it, but I'll try it again. How is it that even in sorrow or pain I find myself wearing a smile? And when the clouds are so heavy with rain Why do I walk one more mile? And how am I so sure that all will be fine? Though tears are ready to flow, and 
And why does my soul fill with praise one more time? The only reason I know it's this joy, joy, unspeakable joy. Sometimes it overtakes me. It's right in the middle of my darkest trial. Just when it's so black I can't see. But then I feel it overflowing inside. And I'll feel him lighten my load. It's something so great I can't explain. I've got joy in my soul. Do you ever lie down and sleep like a child with troubles too many to count? Cause just you know that after a while everything will work out and although the circumstance looks just the same and there is no change to be seen but still there's a joy that you just can't explain and there is a song you must it's this joy, joy, unspeakable joy. Sometimes it overtakes me. It's right in the middle of my darkest trial. Just when it's so black I can't see. Then I feel it overflowing inside. And I'll feel him light in my Song. Well, I'm glad he knows my name, ain't you? I was thinking, and this is how my old crazy mind works. I can see me up here screaming and pitching the fit and running all over the place. Maybe some of them angels up in heaven walk up my voice. You know who that is? <laughs> well, man will call me sometimes. You know this person? I don't know him. You know them? I don't know. Well, they said they know you. Just know the other. Man, I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look at the Lord. He knows me. You know him? Yeah. yeah, I know him. That's one of mine. Yeah. That's on him. Yeah. It's that literal. He knows yeah. my name. Yeah. And I know his name today. Yeah. Glad I'm saved, ain't you? Yeah. I'm sitting right here just looking back through the congregation, and I'll shut up. <laughs> See Desi sitting right there. See Madison. See Sierra. I got to watch them young girls on the ball fields play ball their whole life. Got to love to watch them all play. Shorty, one of the best second basemen I've ever seen in my life. Slick as a whistle. Desi, fast as lightning, one of the best center fielders ever played the game. Even pitched for me a few innings. <laughs> love to watch them. Sierra was a little old fireball. But boy, I'd just see here, Desi, see you in church smiling. When the Spirit of God Amen. is moving, Amen. and to see you run down the longest fly ball and slide and make a catch of anything I ever seen. I thank God that they've been a part of my life ever since it's that big. And it didn't stop at the end of ball. Amen. We're serving the Lord together. Amen. Nothing brings me greater joy than that right there. And I love them girls and I love what they mean to me. Avery, it's good preaching weather, son. Come on. I appreciate the Lord tonight. I'm excited to be here. My mouth's about dry. And give me just a second. Uh, I don't know if I'll be before you very long, right. but tonight I don't know. Uh, only thing I've got is just a 
a short, uh, a short direction of a message. The Lord, give me a, a message title and a thought. And, and I think, I think uh, that God knows everything. I know that He does. Uh, and I think He knew exactly who would be here tonight. I think He knows that it's for somebody here tonight. Uh, I'm thankful that uh, we got a good report this morning. I'm, I'm talking about a report here in the church, not something in a hospital, not somebody who's been in a hospital and been upset, or somebody that's uh, uh, dying with cancer. But I'm thankful tonight uh, that, uh, that we're singing that song they said he took my case I'm thankful that he did take my case but I'm thankful more than anything that he took some cases in his church this morning that he picked up some cases and said I want to carry your load and he said I want to be a friend to you I want to help you I'm thankful tonight for that God's been good to me He's been too good for me to, to me to, uh, to be quiet and be shut up and, and uh, not say nothing. I could stand here all night and, and tell you everything that He's done in my life. I look back at my little wife and I look at uh, places that we've been. I told Brother Heath uh, the other day we was going to the gun range and I said I, I, there's things I see in my mind that I can't unsee. Places we've been, places uh, uh, that, we've, that we've seen, things that we've done uh, that I'm not proud of. But I am thankful tonight uh, to be standing behind this desk, uh, to be standing preaching God's Word uh, to tell you tonight that there's hope in a man named Jesus. It's not hope. It's something else. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Bless His name. Like I said, I don't have much of a... I don't have much no, no notes or nothing. Uh, I've just got a message title wrote down and I'm just going to trust in the Lord tonight that He'd give me exactly what that I need. Uh, I, I was up praying last night and Asking the Lord to, uh, to to anoint my mouth this morning, as uh, me and Taylor went up to Newland and uh, preached up there this morning, uh, and I'm asking the same thing tonight. I was I told uh, Brother Heath, I said I feel like uh, that no matter what, I said I believe they're going to ask me to stay up there and preach uh, tomorrow night. This was yesterday we was talking. I said they'll probably have me preach up there tomorrow night as well. I said it just seems that way. And Brother Heath called me this morning. And he said, uh, if they don't have you preach up there tonight, he said, can you preach at Old Fort tonight? And I said, well, I'll let you know as soon as they tell me whether I'm uh, going to come up there or not. And he said, well, uh, why don't you just tell them that you done made other obligations that we want you at Old Fort tonight. So I think the Lord knows what He's doing. I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm thankful to be, uh, to be here preaching to you tonight. If you would, turn in your Bibles for just a few minutes. Like I said, I don't know how long. Uh, that I'll be before you. I don't have no specific direction. I'm just going to trust in the Lord. Turn in your Bibles to uh, Luke chapter 22. Uh, we're going to start in verse 31. And if you would stand for the reading of God's Word. <clears throat> I'm thankful for what I feel, felt here already in the singing tonight and the, and the testimony. Brother, uh, we was just in the, in the room back here in the prayer room and uh, Brother Presley, we was asking him how his back was. He said his back was doing good, and it uh, it looked awful good uh, to see him. We was up in this choir, and he's got his both hands raised, uh, praising the Lord, saying God's been good to him. I think we all could do that for just a minute. We could say God's been good to every one of us. Uh, if you found your place, to say Amen. amen. All right, Luke chapter twenty-two. I said I'm gonna start in verse thirty-one. Uh, y'all pray for me tonight. I need an anointing touch from the Lord. I can stand up here and speak words, but it won't amount to nothing if the Lord ain't in it. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy, that thy faith fail not. 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt... Thrice deny that thou knowest me. Go to verse 54. He says, Then took they him, they're speaking of Jesus, they've arrested him. He says, Then they took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him. And as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, Thus man was also with him. They're speaking of Peter saying, You was with Jesus. We know you was. In verse 57 he says, And he denied him saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. 
and about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth this fellow also was with them, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And you can be seated. That's all I feel like reading uh, right at this time. Uh, but as, I, as, as I, I started reading this, and I want to tell you, and I'll try to break it down the best that I can. Like I said, I don't have any specific direction tonight. I pray that the Lord would just help me. Uh, but I read this here. It says, And the Lord said unto Simon, He said, Behold, Satan desired to sift you as wheat. I believe that the Lord sees everything that we're going through. He knows exactly uh, from the beginning and to the end. He said, I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. I believe that He knows every second of our life. I believe that He can see uh, the very second that we take our first breath. He knew us before we took our first breath. Brother Stephen, He knows every hair on your head. He's got them counted. He knows the sands of the sea. Jesus knows it all. And He says, Simon, Simon, He says, uh, the, he said, I want you to know that Satan hath desired to sift you as wheat. He said, but I've prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. But I want you to notice that what that Simon says back to him, Simon Peter is who he's talking about. He says, And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And I began to think about this. I began to think about uh, folks that's just brand new converts, that's, uh, that's just got saved, that uh, they've just got brought into the fold, they've just got brought into the family of Jesus Christ, uh, that Christ has uh, given them a new life, that they're born again. And I began to think about how on fire that we get, uh, how excited uh, that zeal that gets on the inside of you uh, to want to serve Jesus, that zeal that gets down on the inside of you that says, I want to keep pressing forward for Him. I wonder how many times uh, we get that desire I wonder how many times we ride this roller coaster of life up and down and we get excited we say I want to serve him I want to do the very best that I can and I believe that's what Peter was saying here he said Jesus I'm ready to go with you into prison or even unto death but I also want to note that God isn't wrong and God doesn't make mistakes and I also believe that what happened right here and exactly the reason that we read it is for men uh, like myself to get up and preach this Word uh, so that we can, uh, we can preach this Word and know that, the, that, that God gives forgiveness to us, that there's grace and mercy that abounds uh, greater than anything else in our life. Uh, I think that's exactly why this is here for us tonight. Uh, but he says, he says, Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And it says, uh, I'm just going to paraphrase here, but it says uh, that they was a maid come to him and said, uh, You was with this man. He said, no, that I wasn't. And there was another come to him and said, uh, just a little while after, said, uh, thou art also of them. And Peter said, no, I'm not. And he said, uh, it says just about an hour later there, was, uh, later, there was a man confidently coming and said, he confidently affirmed, saying, this is of a truth. This man is also with them, for he is a Galilean. But we get to verse uh, 62, or 60, uh, 61 and 62, and it says that Peter... Uh, immediately after Peter says the third time that he denies Christ, that he doesn't know who he is, that he doesn't know uh, this man named Jesus, it says that, that Peter, uh, I think Peter knew immediately. I think Peter knew right that second what was going on. I believe Peter uh, started to feel some condemnation in his heart right at that second. I believe that he knew right that second that he had done wrong. And I'm thankful tonight that God uh, has, has a chastening rod that when we do wrong, I'm thankful tonight that He'll show us uh, that we're not, we're not in the right correction, uh, that we're not uh, going uh, after His Word, that if we're not pressing forward, uh, that we're surely going backwards. There's only two directions we can go. I'm thankful tonight that He shows us uh, through that His Word that if we're not living right, uh, that He can show us what we need to do. And that's exactly what He does here to Peter. But He says, in 62 here it says that Peter went out and wept bitterly. And for just a few minutes tonight I'd like to preach on this thought. There's still a few embers. 
That's what I'd like to preach. If you remember anything tonight, I'd like for you to remember that, that there's still a few embers. I was up late in the night last night. I was praying. I told you that I had, uh, I was praying for uh, Sunday morning's message this morning, uh, specifically for that church, uh, that God, if God wanted me to go a different direction, that He'd show me a different direction that He'd have me to go. And uh, I continued to pray about that. And then uh, I told Heath yesterday, I said, I, I felt like that uh, I was going to preach somewhere tonight I didn't know and I began to pray and said oh God you've set this tomorrow morning for them give me the message that you want me to preach tomorrow night I don't know what direction that is and I prayed all through the night last night I continued to pray and I told Heath earlier I said I don't think folks uh, that's never stood behind this pulpit could understand what that weight feels like and what that feels like to sit up at night and lose sleep and feel like uh, your stomach's in knots and feel like that uh, uh, your stomach's bound up you can't can't do anything uh, because you want to hear from the Lord. Uh, if, when you, when you want to pray about something, uh, there's nobody else that can fulfill uh, what the Lord can fulfill. But I began to pray last night and I began to uh, ask the Lord what He'd have me to preach. And I continued up all night long and it was about 2 in the morning. Uh, my wife, she sleeps hard. A bomb wouldn't wake her up. But I woke up uh, last night in the middle of the night and... Uh, the Lord was, uh, when, I, when I woke up, I had, I had some thoughts on my mind and I thought, well, maybe this is what the Lord had had me to preach. And I was continuing to pray and I leaned over to the nightstand and I grabbed my phone and I went into my notes and I started typing some notes into my phone. And my wife rolled over and she said, uh, she said, what in the world are you doing? She said, it's like two o'clock in the morning. I said, I know, I said, but I can't sleep. I said, I continue to pray and continue to ask God to uh, give me the right direction for the message. And I said, uh, whenever He gives it to me, I want to be ready. And I said, I just woke up and I've got these uh, thoughts that come to me. And if this is what He wants me to preach, I want to be sure of it. And so I began to type them down and I and, uh, went back to sleep. And uh, it was just tossing and turning all night. And every time uh, that you wake up, the first thought in your head is, uh, God, give me something I need I need." I need, to, uh, I need to help folks. I need to be a help. God's called me into this ministry. He's anointed me to do this work. And I truly believe that. He's anointed me to help folks and to be a help to people. And I believe that's what He's called me to do. And if He's called you to do a work, you ought to have a desire to do it. I, that didn't cost you nothing. That was free. But I believe uh, that uh, when God calls you to do something, that you ought to be excited about it. And just like I said, I, I was up all night tossing and turning. And I didn't know what uh, direction to go. And so about 5 o'clock this morning, it's my normal, my normal everyday routine. Uh, I get up at about 5, uh, the alarm goes off, and uh, I'm not one of these snoozers that just keep hitting the button, because uh, I'll lay there all day if I do, so I might as well get up and let my feet hit the floor. And uh, so my feet hit the floor just like every single morning, and I, go, I, I typically get up and I go to my living room, and uh, I sit down there at the couch, I kneel down at the front of it, and I pray first and I ask God to help me every single day and I get, uh, I get this Word out and I sit it there with me and I ask God to help me when I sit down and read that He would show me what that He would have me to do. But this morning was just a touch different. I was heading uh, into the... I I'd got out of the bedroom and I was walking through the house and uh, it's dark at 5 a.m. I, I don't have no lights on in the house. I try not to uh, wake her up. I try to let her rest and try to let her sleep. Uh, but I started to walk through the house and last night I remembered uh, that I had stoked a fire up and I had a big fire going on inside the wood stove. And my wood stove has in, in the house has got a glass front on it and you can see inside of it. And as, uh, as I walked past it, something kind of caught my eye. I didn't stay up late. I was in the bed about 9 o'clock last night and I knew this morning uh, when I got up that the fire would be gone, that the fire would be out. But I happened to walk past it this morning and I happened to see just a little bit of something glowing on the inside of it. 
And I cracked the door open and I knelt down there at it and I started to blow in there on it and I seen just a little bit of fire start to come out of it. And the Lord spoke to me in my spirit right that second. And He said, I want you to go to that church wherever you're at tonight. And I want you to let them people know that maybe feel like Peter has. That they've done everything that they could do but they fell by the wayside. There's been times where that they felt like that they were trying to live right. But God told Peter, He said, you'll deny me thrice and we see Peter that Peter is weeping bitterly and I believe these folks that's in that specific situation right here tonight I believe that 100% that you feel like your fire has just started to dwindle you feel like your fire has started to go down just a little bit you feel like you don't have that zeal anymore you feel like you don't have that excitement that you used to have hey but I want you to know that at 5 o'clock this morning when I walked up to that door of that wood stove and I cracked it open God said let them know he said you go to that church and you let them know there's still some embers left that I can use. There's still a few embers left. I began to think about what it would take to get that fire back going. And the Lord said, I need you to put some good dry stuff on it. I need you to put some good dry wood back on that. I've heard people all my life, they say, well, I feel like I'm in a valley. I feel like I'm just dry. Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, you got some good stuff to throw back on it. Hey, I want you to know you're not stuck where you're at. I want somebody to know tonight that God's not done with you. I want somebody to know tonight that God can rekindle that flame. I want you to know tonight that God can pump that fire back up in you. Or that he can, re- he can redo everything that He's done. We serve a good Savior. I began to think about just a few months ago when we was getting these Sunday school classes ready me and uh, I believe it was me and my wife and Taylor I don't remember who all was up there but we was cleaning these rooms out getting ready to remodel them and and, and get some things ready anyhow and uh, we run across a little old Folgers can a little Folgers coffee can and didn't happen to notice it was road on it, but we, we didn't see it at first. Just happened to see a bunch of papers stacked in that in that uh, that can there. And I appreciate some of the folks that's taught uh, in our Sunday school class. That's been a uh, I want to pin some roses on those folks tonight for uh, for for helping me and being a being a light to me at a young age. But uh, but those when we got in there and we started looking at that little Folgers can. Uh, we, we, start, we said, what are these? We didn't know what it was. And we started to pull the papers out of it, and they was, if they was one, they was 500 of them. I mean, they were stacked full. They were stacked full, and we started to open them up, and we began to start reading names. We began to start reading names that said Chester Stover. Yeah. We began to flip open another one that said Mike Amerto, which is my daddy. We began to read more that said Justin, Brother Justin Nichols when he was going to church here. We said, what is this? And we flipped it around and it said, this is the God can. Hey, and I want you to know uh, that there was some folks that, oh uh, Lord, that, uh, that set a right path for us young folks uh, to let us know uh, that we could put our prayer request in there, uh, that it wasn't just a can, uh, but it said it was the God can. Hey, I want you to know that I prayed and prayed many prayers. There was in prayers for my daddy. It was probably in 2001 or 2002. I remember praying in prayers for my daddy. And tonight I can stand and say, hey, he's sitting in a church somewhere. Hey, he's getting getting fed the gospel because God can. Hallelujah. God can. I didn't say we can. I said God can. I read over in James. I believe it's James chapter 4. If i got a second, I'll flip over to it. James chapter 4, starting in verse 1, says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? He says, Where'd they come from? 
Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? He said, did it come from the lust that war in your members? But I want you to read what it says here. He said, you lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it of your own because that you may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not the friendship of the world is enmity with God? That sounds uh, awful cut and dry. But I ain't got to the good parts yet. I want you to read verse 6 with me. It says, but He, but He giveth more grace. Hey, I want to preach to somebody tonight that you may feel like that your life is spiraling downhill. I want to preach to somebody tonight in here that you feel like you've lost every bit of your fire. Hey, and I want you to know that God sees exactly where you're at. Hey, God ain't lost you. Just because you've backed up on Him don't mean that He's backed up on you. Hey, I want you to know that He's got more grace for you. God loves you. I read over in, in uh, Romans... I read over in Romans where uh, Paul writes, he says, he says, uh, neither nor height. He said, I'm persuaded that the love of God, let me just find it so I can actually read it to you. He says, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor present, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want you to know tonight that there's absolutely nothing in this world that you could do that could separate you from the love of Christ. I want you to know tonight that there's no depth. I want you to know that there's no height. That tells me His love continues on forever and ever. That tells me that God loves you more than He loves anything else. He loves each and every soul in here. That tells me that He'll continue providing for us. I read in this Word where it says He'll never leave us and He'll never forsake us. Uh, That's because He loves you. I read in this Word where He'll continue to provide for us uh, when we need it. I think about that little widow woman uh, that was at the the well. Uh, He didn't condemn the woman, uh, but He told her the woman, uh, not widow woman, that she had multiple husbands uh, but he said he met her at the well the Samaritan woman and he said uh, he didn't condemn her he said I want you to know that I love you I think about Jonah uh, when Jonah said I'm going to Tarshish he said no I told you to go to Nineveh he said no I'm going to Tarshish he said no I told you to go to Nineveh what happened when he went on his own way Jesus made a way for him he said I still love you I'm thankful tonight that when we go our own way that God still loves us. I'm going to read you just a little bit of Scripture and I'm going to close her up. In uh, Romans chapter 5, it says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Now hold on, it says scarcely... For a righteous man will one die. Say, it's not real often. It's not real often. Will somebody die for a righteous man? Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. A righteous man, well it might. But for a good man, he ain't even going to dare to give his life up for just a decent man. But I want you to read verse 8 there. It said, But God commended His love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hey, that ought to make you shout tonight. It means a little bit something different to you. Oh, when I put my name in it, it says, While Avery was still a sinner, Christ died for him. Hey, Brother Danny, while you was a sinner, Christ died for you. Brother Silas, just because that you was in sin, Christ died for you. He still loves you. Ezekiel 37 said, Can these bones live? He said, Lord, thou know. You know if they can. 
hey, I want to tell you tonight as Diane comes to the piano, I want to tell you tonight that when I open up that box, that old fire box, there's a few embers left in there. Amen. It don't take much to start a fire. All it takes is one little spark and you might feel like you're dry. Go ahead. You might feel like you're dry. You might feel like you ain't got nothing going on. But I want you to know that God knows exactly where you're at. He's got exactly what that you need. All you need for Him to get right up in there. All you need is the Lord to breathe a little life back in you. All you need is the Lord to rekindle that flame for you one more time. Hey, I want to ask you, every one of you to stand to your feet tonight. I want to give an altar call. It might seem strange. It's going to be for everybody here. I want to ask you tonight, do you have that same zeal that you had one time? Do you have that same desire that you had before? Do you want to serve Him better? Ever head bowed and ever eye closed? If God puts it on your heart to get in this altar and pray, don't miss your chance. Do you have that same desire that you had before? Can these, can these uh, bones live again? Lord, thou know. They absolutely can. They absolutely can. Hey, I want you to know there's still a few embers left in there. And God can do something with them. Won't you let Him tonight? These folks all over these altars. If you don't have nothing to pray about, why don't you come up here and pray for a loved one? If you say, God, I want you to put a fresh fire back in their heart. God, I want you to put a fresh fire back in their soul. Why don't you come up here and pray for these folks that's in these altars begging the Lord to move in their life? These altars is getting full. Don't miss out tonight. that you'd help your people tonight, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'd move, Father, in a mighty way. I pray, God, that you would help folks that's in this altar tonight, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that uh, you'd give them strength, God, to let them know, uh, God, that you can rekindle that flame again. God, that uh, they can trust in you, Jesus. Lord, that they can lay every th- weight up beside them, God. Lord, they can hand it all to you, Jesus. Lord, that you'd move uh, tonight, God, Lord, in a mighty way. God, I pray, Lord, that you'd help them, Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord, you'd give them strength tonight, God. I pray, Lord, that they'd go back home knowing, God, trusting in you, God, that you can put that zeal back in their heart, God. Lord, that you can take those things away out of their life, God. Lord, I know that you can. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I want you to know tonight that I love you. I appreciate you. I appreciate this church. I appreciate what we feel here on a regular basis. Amen. I didn't really get into it tonight, but I also want you to know that that story don't end there where that Peter said he denied the Lord. If you'll continue reading on, if you'll continue reading on in John, I believe it's chapter uh, 21 or 22, I believe I've got it bookmarked here. It's uh, 21. The Lord comes back to Peter after that he's after that he's uh, he's went to Calvary and he's resurrected on the third day. He comes back to Peter and he says, "Peter, he says, do you love me?" And Peter says, "Lord, you know I love you." He says, "Well, go and feed my sheep." And he says, "Peter, do you love me?" He says, "God, thou knowest that I love you." 
He said, well, go and feed my sheep. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Peter was getting a little aggravated. He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. He said, well, I want you to feed my sheep. I want you to know that on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, that Peter preached probably one of the solidest messages that this world has ever heard. Now, I believe that Jesus Christ was the preacher of all preachers. He was the best there ever was, best there ever will be. But I do believe that Peter preached a message there. It said there was thousands got saved. And it said they continued to add to the church daily. Amen. So I want to remind you tonight that it don't end right there. Amen. It don't end there. And I want to read you this in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 5. The Lord's speaking to uh, the church of Ephesus. And he says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. I heard a man preach one time. He said, Remember, repent, and resume. Now I want to leave you all with that tonight. There's still some fire left. Repent. we got to remember the first works. Repent and ask God to help us and move forward. Preacher Johnny preached the other night and done a fantastic job. He said, get rid of that dead man. He ain't helping you. That dead man's only carrying, it's dead weight and you're just carrying him around for nothing. If you've repented of it and you've got it under the blood, ask God to help you keep moving forward. That's all I want to give you tonight. I appreciate it. Appreciate the message tonight. Thank God for the help again tonight. God's good, ain't he? Amen. Gracious and merciful. All right. Appreciate that, Avery. Appreciate the good message that we heard. We'll get our ushers to come up and take up the Sunday evening tithes and offering. Brother Jim McGinnis, would you bless the offering, brother? Amen. It's been great to be in the house of God all day. See you here Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Bring somebody with you. Love you.